Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, and happy Kaiser Drop Day. Today, tonight, at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, all of the new Kaisers are dropping, and I saved what I think is the best for last. Now, there were some really good knives in this drop, but this model here, this one, I was talking about this model back at Blade Show in Atlanta earlier this year. You know, I was walking around the Kaiser booth looking at all the new knives coming out. And uh, Kay at the time, who was working with Kaiser, was showing me everything. We were talking, having a good time. She's like, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? And I was, of course, like, you know, that's good. That's good. You know, most mostly everything at the booth was pretty good. But then I came across this knife. And it, it's a little different but this knife is the perfect combination of different and functional and just there's so many good things about this for me. We're going to get into it and take a look. And the best thing about it is there is a budget version and a premium version, which I didn't even know there was a premium version coming until just recently. I had only handled the budget version at Blade Show. And uh, what we have here is the Kaiser Doberman. This guy right here, it, it does, it, it actually, I think what I really like about this knife, well, I'll get to that when I get to it, but let's just pop it out here and take a look at it real quick in all of its beauty. And as you can see, this is, the, the design influence does come from the dog Doberman, and you definitely, you definitely get some Doberman vibes in this guy. Um, so there's the budget version, and let's pull out this premium version too. We're just going to have them there together, uh, and we're going to talk about both of them, go over all the specs, and just why I think these things are, was, I, I truly mean this, this budget version is one of my favorite Kaiser knives under $100 ever, like ever, because it checks all the boxes for me. And what I look for in what I think to be a truly great EDC knife. Especially when you're looking under that $100 price tag. So the premium version is titanium with S35. Uh, all blacked out. Probably I'm assuming in uh, kind of honor of the Doberman Pinscher himself. Um, and if you guys don't know, I actually do. I, I love animals, but I specifically love dogs and cats. I like dogs more, even though I have two cats, <laughs> but I do love my cats, but I love dogs. So the fact that this is designed after a dog and it's a design that just works in every single way for me, it makes me really happy. Um, so we'll kind of set the premium one aside for a sec, not aside, just in the background. And uh, we'll go over some overall specs on these two knives, looking at this one, because they're both obviously, in terms of size, it's the same knife. So we are looking at an overall length of 8.66 inches with a blade length coming in at 3.66 inches and a blade thickness at your standard 120 thousandths. Uh, blade material, we have 154 cm on the Vanguard version. Surprise, surprise, that's usually what it always is. And on the premium version, as I said before, we have S35 VN. Uh, we have basically kind of a drop point style blade. I got more to say, a lot more to say about the blade when we get to that. Um, we have a handle length coming in at 5 inches with a handle thickness at 562 thousandths. Uh, handle material, as I said before, G10, titanium, black and titanium. A uh, locking mechanism of a liner lock and a really, really nice inset liner lock that works so, so, so well. Love that liner lock access. Uh, user of a right or left hand tip up carry. Uh, weight coming in at 4.44 ounces on the budget version and a weight of 5.89 ounces for the heftier titanium version. Uh, this is designed by Alexander Shalutko, and I think I pronounced that perfectly. Um, Olex, if you're watching this, let me know. Olex actually reached out to me on Instagram. Um, he had seen, I was, I was hyping this knife up because I really was a fan of it well before it was ever even sent to me. Like I said, I handled it at Blade Show. I was waiting for this one all year. Um, really, really happy how this turned out. I honestly think it actually turned out a little better than the version I was handling at Blade Show. So really happy with this one. Uh, price coming in at $82 for the Vanguard version. And again, a very reasonable $169 for this budget version. 
Uh, you, you know, guys, when you get Titanium, S35VN, and a Mill Clip, and the Kaiser Fit and Finish, and all that good action, uh, yeah, $169 is good to go for me. Um, and of course, $82 is just fine as well. Uh, let's take a look at some size comparisons here. We'll pull the premium off for this size comparison and let's see how it measures up with some other ones. Uh, the Kaiser Escort, it's a very well-known knife. My knife of the year for, uh, I believe it was 2022. And let's also pull out here the Civivi Conspirator. And uh, yeah. Obviously a lot longer than both of those two. What do we get? What else we got over here? Ah, here we go. Here's a Civivi. This one's a little longer. This should work pretty well. The Civivi Sentinel Strike. Very nice comparison with the Sentinel Strike there. Uh, let's pull one more. Let's bring out the paramilitary. Wow. Really, really botched that middle finger flick on the military too. Uh, paramilitary too. There you go. There's that. And as you can see, this is definitely a long knife. When you're longer than the paramilitary too, you're a long knife. Um, and I do get, moving into the blade of this knife, I do get some Spyderco vibes from this blade um, in a few different ways. One, you got this nice full flat grind, which you see on so many Spydercos. Love the full flat grind. I love this blade shape in general. It This blade shape is great for slicing. It is great for piercing. It is great for just about any task you would have for a pocket knife. Um, huge fan of this. 15 thousandths behind the edge. Extremely slicey with a, a nice thin edge and a full flat grind. Excellent blade for EDC. And back to the Spyderco uh, reference, I also get some Spyderco Kapara vibes. And you might get stronger Kapara vibes by looking at the satin version since the Kapara was satin. But I I can't help but see some Kapara in here. It, but the big difference, obviously, is you have a significant more amount of belly on the blade of the Doberman, as well as you have just the regular flipper and thumb studs, as opposed to where on the Dober or on the uh, Capara you just had the spidey holes. So um, I do personally heavily prefer the thumb studs and flipper over just the spidey hole, um, especially considering how the Capara was set up. Uh, that hole was a little harder to get to. Still love the Capara, still worked great, um, but this is definitely more fidget friendly and thumb studs that are placed in a perfect position, and a flipper that is very, very minimal. This is a lot like a kind of like a Vero Engineering flipper. Uh, not exactly the same, but very similar in terms of just how much power that little minimal flipper generates. Um, and in terms of the rest of the blade, it is just, man, oh man, I... I really like this knife in general. I love the blade. I like the blade, how it works with the handle, but most importantly, what I really look for in a blade is sliciness, versatility. You have it with the Doberman here. Uh, going into the handle, let's get back to the premium. They both feel pretty much the same. This actually feels a little heavier, but in terms of in terms of the ergos and just how it feels, um, the excellent ergos, excellent, excellent ergos. Um, and really, let's actually go back to the budget version here because this budget version, I really do love both of these versions. Obviously, the premium's always nice. I mean, who ever has a problem with a premium knife? Um, but this budget version in particular, it's really kind of a flex for a budget knife. You have fully contoured scales that feel great. You have perfectly inset liners with an excellent lockup. You have multi-row bearings in the knife itself. Multi-row bearings, obviously, in both of these, uh, making for some super smooth action. You have a nice milled clip that is locked in. So if you were to take this apart, you would see in here um, there's a notch in there. So this, this blade or this clip is not moving anywhere. It's locked in. It is good to go. Um, a very nice backspacer that's actually milled really well. Has a nice little lanyard hole down there for anyone that uh, is a fan of lanyards. And a simple but very complex construction here. Um, I don't do this a lot, but I'm going to do it for this video because this does have a very, very unique construction that I think you guys should all see. Um, I don't really have the time right now to take this thing apart. And I've seen what it looks like apart, so I don't really feel the need to do it. 
And these things are both just so stupid smooth. I, you know, if something ain't broke, don't try fixing it, right? You don't need to take it apart. Um, but I am going to link my buddy Vu's disassembly video down below. So obviously there'll be links to purchase these knives, but check out that disassembly video too. That would be pretty cool. I think you'd be very interested in that if you haven't seen this knife apart yet, because it is a very unique construction of just how this knife went together. Um, and then you also have kind of like the chef's kiss for this knife. I really love this wood grain finish on the G10. Um, it's so good. It's so simple. Um, it's not the first time Kaiser's done it and it, they're not the only one to do it. You see it on other knives. I just always like calling that out because this really kind of looks like a black wood and I love that. I really do. I think that looks excellent. And the black and titanium is also nice. I'm kind of considering of like blasting these scales and having like a raw tie look. I feel like a raw tie might actually, I don't know. I think that would look pretty sweet. Um, but in terms of the action on both of these, um, the premium, I've actually, so I carried the budget version a little longer because I'm assuming there's probably more of the budget versions made and I feel like those are the ones that sell the quickest. So I wanted to get a little more experience with this one and this is also a lighter knife. So if you, if you are looking for a more lightweight option, I don't think this is light at 4.44 ounces, but it's significantly lighter than 5.89 ounces. You do, obviously holding these two together, you definitely feel like this one is heftier than the budget version. Uh, neither one is really a problem for me. Really big fan of both of them. Um, in terms of the action, man, these multi-row bearings, they just absolutely fly. They are so smooth. The blade, gl the blade glides out so easily. Um, I, like I said, though, this definitely, my premium definitely needs a little more break in time. But this is pretty much, I haven't actually carried this one in the pocket yet. Um, I fidgeted with it, kind of done all my out-of-the-box stuff I do to it just to get a feel for it. Um, and when it breaks in, oh boy, it is definitely going to be very, very smooth, very good. It already is smooth, just doesn't quite have that buttery drop shut yet. You gotta, gotta shake it a little, as opposed to where my budget version is definitely smoother. And again, that's just through carry. It's just through carry and use, guys. Um, the more you use your knife the better the action gets. So don't be afraid to use your stuff. Um, but I tell you what, in terms of fidget factor, the thumb studs are perfect. The flipper, the flipper is really good. It's The flipper is amazing for what it is. Some people don't like the really low profile flippers. Um, this one actually, like I said, it works a lot like a Vero engineering flipper. So if you've had a handled Vero, you know that once you get that flip going, it just generates so much power. The blade flies out. It's just a very satisfying flip. And the thumb studs are placed perfectly, so they kick the blade out just fine. And it is a very, very, very enjoyable knife to fidget with, whether you are talking the budget version or the premium version. Um, and like I said, guys, for me, this is a perfect combination of a unique design, a very functional, slicey, useful blade, and excellent ergos. And again, whether you're talking $82 or $169, I think either one is a great value. This is an excellent budget offering, and this is a very affordable premium offering. Again, when you're talking a lot of premium knives anymore that are well north of $200, um, it's hard to have a problem with any of these Kaiser premiums that are coming in at $159, $169 with great materials, all the fit and finish and action and great designs. Um, I really think Kaiser, it, it, it's kind of weird to say it because I feel like they're always leveling up in one way or another, but I really think that they've elevated their premiums this year in terms of everything that's offered and the price you're paying for them. The premiums have really knocked it out of the park this year. And the Vanguard lineup for, for Kaiser is just as, as solid as ever. I mean, they're just still excellent knives. You can't beat them. There's probably a couple companies out there that are doing as good a job as Kaiser, but there's no one better than them. They're, they're, they're at the top echelon up there with probably two or three other companies in terms of budget knives in that 60-ish to 80, $89 range. Um, just excellent offerings. Uh, definitely my favorite knife of the drop. 
the Kaiser Doberman. But also, guys, don't forget there's also some Laconic series. You got the Submarine there. And then you also have the Porcupine. And I just realized this Porcupine, I think I would like this a lot more if it wasn't using these Jade Scales. I feel like this needs to be all black with the Satin Blade. So I'm going to take care of that because I think I'm going to like this knife a lot more when it is the proper colorway. I, think, I don't think Jade was a really good option there for that. Just my opinion. And of course, don't forget about this hoss, the Huntsman. This thing... If you don't have a problem with a recurve blade, this Huntsman is, I, I love this thing. And I didn't think I would, but oh, man, oh, man, that thing, it sounds and feels assisted, but it's not. The thumb studs are awesome on this. The action's incredible. The blade's wicked. Uh, this is a very, very unique different lineup coming out of Kaiser this month, guys. And it's been a really fun one to bring you. So let me know what you think of these knives, especially the Doberman. I, If I had to pick one from this series, I, I, I would go Doberman and then I would go straight to the Huntsman. Um, really huge fan of all these. I do have one more to bring you, but that one kind of got delayed in shipping. So we'll bring that to you at a later time. But there they are, guys. Most of the Kaiser drop for this month. Hop on down that link below. Pick one up. Let me know what you think of them. Let me know what you think of how Kaiser's doing so far this year. We're getting very close to the end of the year, and uh, Knife of the Year awards are right around the corner. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hope you have a great rest of your day, and until the next one, I'm out.